Hey, um, can I show you um, a, a, a magic trick? Yeah, sure, I'd uh, love to see it. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna take the um, um, top, uh, uh, top uh, card, um, the eight, eight of spades, and um, I just uh, take um, the wand and, and I just tap like that and, and then it turns um, into the nine, um, the nine of spades. Uh, yeah, the nine, nine of spades. Okay, uh, awesome, awesome. Uh, how long have you been doing magic for? Um, about two months. Okay, so there is a few things you can work on uh, if you'd like. Uh, I've been doing magic for a while, I could give you a few pointers. Um, okay. So you're on the right track on the double, but it'll actually help you get your grip if you start with a break underneath those two cards first, right? And then you just come over, it's a lot easier to turn it. If you just calm down some of the nerves, you'll be on the right track. Um, okay, Th thank you for being so nice, I appreciate it, and I'm glad there's actually nice magicians out there. Um, giving me good advice. I appreciate the nice, kind gesture. I'm not used to that in, in the magic community. All right, so time for some exposure on how to be nice to each other. I hope you guys enjoyed that performance. But the secret here is really just to be a good person. I know, right? Insane. Now let's jump into the breakdown. So the first thing I can say is just to be nice. You know, when you're going up and talking to someone, especially if they're another magician, we just want to be nice to them. We want to provide them with constructive advice if they would like it, right? Not everyone's going to want advice. The most important thing is just always be positive, no negativity. It's time for some subtleties on how to be nice, how to be a good person. So of course, be natural with it. Everything we do, whether it's a double lift or being nice, we want it to be natural and smooth and seem real, right? Everything we do is deception, of course, um, but we do want it to seem as realistic as possible. Now, of course, no misdirection is needed when we're using these techniques. It's not that kind of effect. But some things that can help you when you're being smooth and natural uh, is to have a positive vocal tone. That's a great subtlety that'll really sell the illusion. And then when you finish the conversation, I always like to tell them to have a nice day. That's that's gold right there, guys, okay? So uh, really take this to heart and think about some of these concepts. They're a little bit more advanced, but I believe in you. You can do it if you put your mind to it. So in terms of some body language, of course, we want to be nonchalant with this. Uh, eye contact. Eye contact is super important. Even a smile, guys, that's great. Now time for some uses and other ideas. Of course, when we're using this, we're, we're using it to interact with other humans, other magicians in particular is what I'm I'm explaining here, how to target, how to be nice to other magicians, how to be a good person to other magicians. For some other ideas, you can actually compliment someone, guys. Uh, believe it or not, that's actually something that you can do and get away with. I know it's a little hard, but if you're sneaky enough and enough practice with the linguistics and the pattern, you should be able to compliment someone or just not saying anything if you don't have anything nice to say. So uh, that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching. What is good guys, it is Reed and welcome to a brand new series. This is one of three of my new series that will be coming soon. This is called Dear Magicians. Now Dear Magicians is essentially um, I don't want to say a rant because I'm not totally the type to rant and all that stuff, but I definitely can talk, as you guys know, and so I will be talking, and these may turn into more of a rant as I, I sort of get going. But these are more going to be conversations, quick videos, I hope that stay around 10 minutes, I don't know, you know me, it might be 30 minutes, but anyway, the idea here is I can talk about positive things in the magic community, things I like, but also negative things and things that uh, we need to improve and stop doing in the magic community. Welcome to the series, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I think it'll be a lot, a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed my little skit at the beginning because I think it's a funny way to sort of highlight the point of this video. So in episode one here, we'll be talking about how to be nice and how to be a good person. Now, obviously I'm not gonna teach you, I'm not gonna give you a tutorial on that. I hope you guys have figured it out by now uh, in your lifetime, but uh, I'm just gonna talk about being positive in the magic community and why we need to support each other as magicians. Now, I also have some uh, stories to tell, at least one in particular, uh, and I will be dropping names because uh, if people want the smoke with me, I will deliver the smoke back and I am not hiding any names. We will get into some juicy, uh, fun stuff in a bit. And so of course, if you guys like this type of video, if you want to see more, drop a comment, drop a like, let me know what you guys think. Let's just get right into it. Dear magicians, how to be nice to each other. So what inspired me to make this video was actually an interaction I had online recently with someone that I will name in a second once I get into that story. So as magicians, we are a niche community. And if that's a shock to you guys, well, you just need to open your eyes because I know when we're in it and we're in the middle of the, the community, whether online or in person, it feels like 
there's magic everywhere. But that's just because you're seeking to follow all the magicians and all the magic related things, so you see it all the time. But really, we are a very, very small community. With that said, we need to support each other no matter what, because if we don't, magic will just keep taking a negative fall and we will end up in a place where magic is more toxic than it already is and it might even die out altogether. So we really need to be positive and support each other. And that's one of my main messages in this video. So the point about us being niche means that we need more support from one another. We already get enough hate from other people, all right? There's plenty to go around from other people, right? I don't get a lot of hate. 99% of my stuff is about, is compliments. And I'm not making this video to talk about me and complain about the hate, because I don't give a shit about the hate, okay? I don't, I love when people hate, it's funny. I, I just laugh, okay? And I have a fun time with it, I mess with them a little bit. Hate comments that get me thinking, because a lot of the time they come from magicians. You guys would be surprised at how many times it comes from magicians. And that's the story I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into when we get to the story time part. So now, why is there problems within the magic community with hate? Well, I think there's a few different ways and places that it comes from, and I do think it's important to identify these issues so that we can solve them. I see some problems with the older crowd versus the younger crowd, right? You see that hate there, where I think the older crowd is often a lot stuck in the past, and, and they want things to be a certain way, and you can't progress past that. And I think they do have some valid points. There are things that make bad magic, it's undisputable. But I think there's a lot more that's able to be explored, right? There's a lot more we need to look into. So sometimes we might try something new and, and make a mistake, and then we'll realize that that's not the avenue we need to go and we need to go somewhere else. But you can't hate on someone for trying something new, okay? Uh, that's how we're gonna find the brand new creations, the best magic that we can get. I really think if you're, if you're stuck in that purest, magic mindset, you need to open your mind to um, new ideas, new concepts. And then one idea that I think I experimented with was that leg can where I did an any card, any number, and it was super clean, but the method involved some dual reality through video and some video editing, but it was all super covert, super sneaky. You can go check out that video if you haven't seen it. And if that sounds like something that you think video editing has no place in magic, well watch that video. And I think you can see how the way I've done it, it's not like Photoshop. I didn't like fake anything. I just used a dual reality, but through the internet, which is something that hasn't been explored before. A lot of people didn't like it and that's fine, but a lot of people saw the value in trying something like that. And that could be the start of something brand new, who knows? But it was worth a shot, it was an idea I had, and I think it was a cool video. I think another aspect is jealousy, and this kind of ties in with ego, right? Uh, magicians, we have huge egos for whatever reason. I won't lie, I have an ego as well, right? Especially as, as men, a lot of us are men, and men, we tend to have big egos, it is what it is, but learning how to check your ego, right? Um, that's, that's a big thing that I believe in, knowing that you may have more skill than someone else, but that's only because you put in more practice. It doesn't mean that that person can't be as good as you. It just means you're at different stages in your journey, right? And so we should treat everyone no matter where they are. If it's their first day of magic or their millionth day in magic, we should all be supportive and treat each other the same. We shouldn't be butting heads and trying to say I'm better than you. It should be a constructive build. Let me show you something cool. You show me something cool and we'll work on this together. I've recently been going to some magic gatherings with some magicians at the local magic club here and it's been great. A lot of people have been very supportive. We have a good time and it's fun. So it's great to see that, but that is in person. And I understand in person, things are different. When people can hide behind a computer screen and type whatever they want, things change, right? And I'm sure some of those things would not have occurred if it was in person. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so another problem, guys, believe it or not, is creators. People in the magic community who create beefing and hating on each other, whether it's because you happen to come up with the same creation or someone uh, had a similar idea to you, or even in the YouTube space, there is some negative people, okay, who are hating on other creators, whether it's because they're smaller than them and they think that they have a couple more thousand subscribers now that they're some kind of big guy in the space, but whatever it is, guys, I will tell you there are people who I know you guys like and you think are good people. I can assure you that might not be the case. I haven't got to the point where I really want to uh, call out names yet, but man, are they pushing me and it's getting close. But believe it or not, some of your guys, some creators that you like are just negative people, man. And they're looking down on other people. 
uh, talking bad about their stuff, making poor decisions in their videos, all these kinds of things. And it does happen and that's the reality of the situation. If you guys try to look into it, read between the lines, I'm sure you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about and see who the genuine people are and the people who are maybe here to make a quick buck or here and don't have your best interests in mind. But of course there are a lot of fantastic creators out there as well who are great people. And yeah, and that's the same thing with the whole magic community. There are good people, there are a lot of good people, but there are still people who are negative and negative people. And then there are positive people who can have a slip up and be negative, right? The ego to me is almost the opposite of jealousy. Ego is often, I'm better than you. Jealousy is, I want to be where you are or I want to do what you do. And a lot of times hate is actual jealousy, right? You hear that a lot. And it's not just in magic, but I think that's a big problem. People see you doing things that they want to be able to do. So they attribute it as fake because they can't do it. They don't want to put in the work, so they hate on it. They say this is bad magic. And you get these people who are jealous and they just won't put in the time themselves to do the actual work that it needs. Or they're, they're too close-minded and they don't believe that some of the incredible effects that we can pull off are possible. Like I said, we need to explore new avenues. So when people see something that's brand new, if their head doesn't comprehend it because of their ego, they assume it's fake and it can't be real because they just can't figure it out. And as a magician, they should know everything. Let me tell you something, guys. You know nothing as a magician. You know a very small bit of what you know. I know a very small bit of what I know. Someone pulls out a coin, I'm gonna get fooled with a simple false transfer because I know barely anything about coin magic. Yes, I have a good knowledge of card magic, but I still get fooled. And that's the reality of these things. So it's okay when you see something that you don't understand brand new to say, wow, that's incredible, rather than that must be fake. Now, unfortunately, of course, I'm sure that there is fake magic, like Jabrizi and people who are faking some of their reactions, okay? I'm sure that still exists, and it's obviously very frowned upon. I don't agree with that at all. I think that's, that's not what magic's about, and it takes away from some of the credibility of magic. I mean, in a sense, though, I could see the side where you could say, you know what? Yes, I'm faking the reaction, faking the effect, but to everyone watching it, the majority of people are going to believe that it happened, and so I'm fooling them. And that's an idea I've thought about too, right? It's just another, it's more of a social media thing, but that's what, what our world revolves around now. So we need to explore social media magic. So maybe, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm curious, I don't agree with this, but I think it could be something that could be explored. If you were to fake reactions, fake an effect completely, actors, all that stuff, Right, and people do this. You see those Snapchat, Facebook things all the time, and it's obviously it's working, but is there a problem with it? Because if you fake it, yes, in real life it wasn't real, but for everyone watching it, the majority of people might think it's real, and you fooled them, and now you're creating magic for them. I mean, we lie all the time, so what's the problem with lying in this context? So just curious what you guys think, because it definitely does happen, but it's not something I would ever do. And uh, the, the negative aspect of this is just when people think that stuff that is real is fake and they try to call you out for it being fake. Now this is a great segue into story time. Recently on Instagram, I had this guy by the name of Kid Magic 7 I'm not here to hate on the guy, I'm just here to use him as an example and he came at me so I'm letting everyone know what happened because his choice. Anyway, he commented on one of my short videos. Now guys, the shorts are just usually small clips, short clips of my performances just to get more eyes on the channel, right? I'm just trying to generate some more eyes and I post them on Instagram as well. You can go follow me over there at RF Slights. But I posted this one video in particular, I will link it here. Essentially, it's a very quick propless name divination. And I will read you a few of his 20 something comments that he left on it, okay? But he started by saying staged question mark. And I responded, nothing I post is staged. And then he said, did you tell her to say Frank, which was the name uh, she thought of in this case. And I said, read what I just said. It's not staged, genuine performance, free choice. And then he proceeds to say one of the absolute dumbest things I have ever heard in my entire life. He said, I said Bob, so did you have to do it a bunch of times till it worked? No, I didn't do it a bunch of times. I do this effect bunches of times and it works every time. The part about I said Bob. So he's saying, take this in guys, this is unbelievable. He's saying he thought of the word Bob, or the name Bob, while watching my video. So the trick didn't work on him because he didn't think of Frank. I'm not performing to you, you dumb mother. I said I wouldn't swear in this video. Um, I think I already have, but I'm not performing to you. Think about how dumb that is, guys. 
I, like he's like, well, I thought of Bob, so it didn't work on me, so it must be staged. I'm not even performing to you. You're literally watching a video. Anyway, um, blows my mind that someone could be that dumb, but anyway. Basically proceeds to tell me to bet money on it and that he's gonna video call me and pay me to do it on him to prove that it works. Okay, he ended up calling me on Instagram, but I didn't see it till like an hour later because he was in the message requests. At the end of the day, I just told him to get a life. The funny part is, is that this isn't even my effect. This is literally Peter Turner's effect, a marketed effect that you can buy and learn how to do it. You can learn, I literally can tell you how to do it because it exists, like, how can it be stay? I, I can show you how to do, I can, you know what I mean? Like, obviously I'm not gonna t waste my time showing this guy how it works because there are so many factors, you know, he's probably gonna try to pick, like, I'll, I asked him to think of a male name, he'd pick a female's name, like all this stuff, and there's just no point. I have no interest in showing these, you know, pathetic people like that uh, any of my magic, right? I'm, I'm here to bring positive and make people happy with my magic. Anyway, uh, he ends up saying that I'm scared because I didn't answer him, but uh, I kind of left him at that, and I thought it was very, very funny. So, uh, he then proceeded to block me because he's such a, a big, strong man. He's big and scary, and, you know, he likes to block people when he can't uh, believe their magic. So. You know, stuff like that I always take as a compliment because if you're saying that my magic is staged, which since I've started posting these shorts, I get here and there because people, you can't believe it. They can't fathom how this could be real. And I understand that I used to be there and I still am there with some of the magic that I see, right? But I know as a magician, what's real, what's possible, what's not like generally. And if something I think is impossible, I'm still gonna give the benefit of the doubt to the creator. But the worst part guys, the worst part about all this and the reason that this inspired me for this video was that he is a magician. He is another magician guys. And he's doing this. I understand if it's a layman, they have no concept of anything, right? But he's another magician. Like we're such a nice community. We need to support each other, guys. We get, we can get hate from outside sources. We need to be bigging each other up, leaving positive comments on people's things. We can't beat down on each other. We need to build each other up, give positive feedback, tell people when you like things, go out of your way to just take two seconds and say that was awesome, right? Do you know how, how great that makes someone feel when someone else takes the time of their day to say something to someone? Right? Especially if you're another magician, they'll respect you in that case. Then when you do see something that you're not a fan of, or you don't like, or it wasn't done very well, because it does happen, there are beginners in this space, there are a lot of beginners, right? Still, try to find something positive to pull out of it. You can always find something that they're doing well, right? At least they posted a video of them performing. That's incredible in itself. So many people don't even do that. Then you can ask if they would like some feedback. Just ask them how long they've been doing magic. Say, hey, I've been doing it for this long. Would you like, I can give you a few little tips. Be nice, be kind, give them positive advice, constructive criticism, right? It's okay to be real with someone, say, hey, your double lift, it needs work. You don't need to say that was absolutely terrible. Um, you know, my grandma could do a better double lift than that. It's staged, right? When you can help. And we need to be this way with younger magicians, beginner magicians, all these people who are, you know, gonna fuel the community for a long time. We need to be nice to each other, guys. At the end of the day, here's what I'll say. And I'll leave off this video on this. If you have something negative to say, just don't say it. Damn, what's his name? Little Kid Magic Lover 7. He could have just not said anything if he thought my thing was staged, right? And just saying, you know what? This is fake. I don't like it. I don't think it's any good. But I don't need to, you know, be negative to another fellow magician. I can just move along. I can scroll to the next video. That's what's crazy to me, guys. Try to be positive in everything you do. And this should apply to everyday life, all that kind of stuff. And my main takeaway here is we need to support each other in the magic community. Let's be nice to each other. Let's stop being negative. And you know, there's always gonna be those bad apples, but don't let the hate get to you guys. If you ever get hate, don't let it get to you. Just brush it off. If you like to have fun like me, you know, make a little joke out of it. But at the end of the day, brush it off. The haters gonna hate, but we just shouldn't be magicians hating on each other. And then that's my big, big message here. Be positive. And if you don't have something nice to say, just keep it to yourself. So I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Dear magicians, episode one, talking about being nice to each other in the magic community. And I hope you guys like that little story. You can go check it out. His comments are still on the video on Instagram. It's quite comical. If you need a good laugh, you can check out his um, magic that he does on his uh, account. But I need to take my own advice here, and so I like his profile picture. 
but he's got a lot of things he needs to work on. So just to let you know, I have him doing private lessons. You can go check out my website. You can sign up for those and we can make you a better magician today. And of course, guys, that goes for anyone. If you would like to check out the website, check out some merch. Where's the RF lights? There it is. I always forget what side it's on. But uh, yeah, you check out some merch, check out some private lessons if you'd like. Uh, those are going fantastic. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you're able to take some value out of this or at least some entertainment. I hope it was, uh, was fun, good little story. I think it's funny. If you guys would like some more stories like this and that sort of thing, I can continue to do that. It also, what would be great, if you have more topics for Dear Magicians, whether they're positive, negative, things I can talk about you'd like my opinion on related to magic and how we interact and maybe stuff like that. I'm gonna end that off there and I wanna thank you guys for watching. Welcome all the new subscribers. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.